Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's video is going to be a geode and a twofer spiral. I did tie up this geode off camera, but I did just make a tutorial where I show how I tie up my multiple geodes. So if you're not familiar with how to tie up a geode or how I like to tie them up, I recommend that you check that video out and I will put a link for it down below in the description box. So what I'm doing right now is I'm working on filling up my spoons that I got from boredomwithjen.com. Jen and John make the amazing tie-dye tools that you see me use. Now I decided that I was going to take my picnic spoons and fill up my spoons just because I didn't want to get the bottom of the spoons dirty. Not dirty, but dye on the bottom of the spoons. Not necessary. You can take your spoon and scoop it right on in there in the jar if you want to. I just didn't want to for this one. Now this project is completely dry because I tied it up quite some time ago. So it's just been sitting off in a big stack of geodes waiting for the dye process. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my pleating tool to tap on the back of the spoon and it looks like I'm tapping really crazy. I'm not, this is sped up a little bit. Some of the dye powder is rather dense and sticky and it doesn't really want to come out of the spoons. And I have found that if I just give a little tap on the back of the spoon, I have better control. Now you could do things like mix your dye with soda ash or globber salt, things like that. I choose not to. So this is what I've come up with, what works for me. And if you don't have the pleating tool, you can use the back of your shears, the back of your finger, the back of just about anything. Okay, so this method is called the dye under ice method. So I'm going directly on top of each geode and I'm going completely random. I did sort of count out like a starting point and I put a little dot and then I'm just building off of there. But the fun thing about making geodes is the more random, the better. So just go for it and have fun. And for this one, I wanted it to have a beachy vibe. So I've chosen colors that are very blue and ocean-like and then the amber waves to be like the sand.
As you can see, I like to go pretty heavy handed when I add my dye to my geodes. They are tied really tight and the fabric is quite thick and to try to avoid having a lot of white space on the inside of your geodes, I feel like a little bit heavier dye, you might be able to get away without flipping it. Now another thing, if you're going to use these dollar store foil pans, make sure you place the entire project down inside of some type of a bin, a bowl, a bucket, something because they have a tendency to leak. Now I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and then I'm going to add my ice. But before I do that, I've decided that I'm going to make a twofer. So during the process of adding the dye to the project, a lot of dye and soda ash has fallen down inside the foil pan. So why not take advantage of this and make a second shirt at the same time? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some Houdini blue down into the bottom, which is gonna mix with all those other colors that are down there, hopefully. And it's going to create some nice dark lines for contrast. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some on there and then you're gonna watch me press my spiral that I also made off camera, but you guys, if you don't know how I make my spirals, I suggest you go watch one of the 200 spirals that I've made. Um, it's very clear how I make them. But I'm gonna press the spiral down into the die that I'm adding here and get a nice coating on the back of it. And then I'm just gonna let it sit in the muck water as the geodes melt. And I'm just gonna set this project aside and I'm going to set it and forget it. I'm going to trust the muck. And before I forget, in case you are brand new to tie dyeing and you're wondering what the heck are those red things, those are silicone cake molds and I got them from Amazon and there is a link down below in the description box along with everything that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check that out. And I was helping somebody look for an ice machine and uh, the Frigidaire ice machines have all sold out. So hopefully Amazon will get more in because I absolutely love this ice machine. Now for this project, like I just said, I set it aside and I set it and forget it. I did check the back after the ice had melted and the geode looked pretty well saturated. So I decided that I'm just going to leave it alone. I didn't want to mess with the spiral down below or anything like that. So I really did just set it aside and I let it batch for about three days and it had nothing to do with anything other than I just could not get to the rinse out process any sooner, and that's okay. So if you just noticed in the beginning, I was tapping the geode on the sink. The thing is bone dry, and that's no big deal. Because actually, I have found that when I untie the geode while it's still dry, it's a lot easier to untie it and it's way less messy and I have not noticed any issue with any dye creeping up and getting in the white lines or anything like that and especially with this thing being completely dry there's absolutely nothing going on anymore now for the rinse out process you want to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirillon. Kirillon is a professional textile detergent. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Milsoft, and Milsoft is a professional fabric softener. And these are the directions that I've been using from Dharma Trading Company that I've done since the beginning of me tie dyeing and they work for me and I know a lot of people do their rinse out process completely different and all I have to say is you all have to figure out what works best for you and just do that. So this is what works for me and this is what I do. So once it's done in the washing machine cycles, I put the projects in the dryer and then I iron them 
and I iron them only because they photograph better. It has nothing to do with setting the dye or anything like that. I get asked that quite a bit. It's just because a wrinkled up tie dyed shirt does not photograph well. Also, once you iron your shirt, the dye looks different on the shirt. It just, it's, it's more visually appealing to look at. So I have found if I have projects that I absolutely cannot stand, after I iron them and photograph them, I see them in a completely different light. And then all of a sudden, I kind of like them. So something to think about. All right, here is shirt number one. This would be our geode. And remember me saying that I was hoping for a beachy vibe? I definitely feel like I have achieved that here. It reminds me of a bunch of little mini islands. So all of the different depths of water like in the varying shades of blue, and then the amber waves creating like uh, little sandbars. I don't know if any of you guys have ever snorkeled or scuba dived or anything like that before. I have scuba dived before and it's super duper cool. And this is actually like what the middle of the ocean looks like. And it's super awesome to go down on the reef and see all the fish. It's like you're in an aquarium. I don't think I will ever do it again. Uh, you know, a couple times was enough for me, but it was a really cool experience. So I'm very happy with the way this shirt turned out. I think the geodes look really nice. I think the color combination works very well for what I was trying to achieve. And it has a very, um, like I said, a very beachy feel. And here we have shirt number two, the twofer spiral. And you guys understand why I call it a twofer, two, four, one. So this is a really awesome technique. I learned it from watching Goyo's garden and tie dye. Uh, he would plunge his shirts into old dye and things like that. And he was getting some really awesome results. And then just by working with Scott and just, you know, he collects his dye and all of this. I just sort of like had this epiphany one day, like I'm wasting a lot of dye. And so I'm gonna see what happens. And you guys, I'm actually loving these spirals more than the actual shirt that I make because they're a complete surprise. I have no idea how they're going to turn out. And as you can see, the Houdini blue did exactly what I wanted it to do. It gave little pops of contrast color that really make the spirals stand out. So it's like more bang for your buck. Instead of pouring all that beautiful muck water down the drain, if you put your shirt in there right from the get-go, you get two shirts at the same time and it's a major space saver. So I'm happy with the way both shirts turned out. What do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.